Hey, this is Ash from All Things Dentistry. Ever want to know the secrets that endodontists use to get down complicated canals? Well, look no further. Check us out at allthingsendo.ca where you'll find those secrets to unlocking your endo potential. Hey, this is Ash from All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips in dentistry. Tooth number four, six. We're going to be extracting this tooth today. But we're going to talk about sectioning techniques. It's really simple, and this it was a game changer for me. And I need to shout out to Dr. Egg Balder, who gave me the idea for this video. He sent me a whole bunch of ideas, but if you check him out at Post.Market, he's got a startup. He's from Toronto, Canada, and he's created this great startup idea where creators like myself can connect with business companies, sponsors, to get some sponsorship for companies. So check him out at Post.Market. Post so thanks so much for him. We had a great conversation and he suggested, you know, doing a sectioning video. So I'm like, well, I got some video and even better. I have some sectioning that didn't go according to plan. So we can watch about things that we change kind of, you know, what a couple tips here and there and just, you know, taking thousands of teeth out. So let's go ahead and take this tooth number four, six. It's endodontically treated teeth and tooth. And, you know, the reason why it's important to learn how to section or plan, have a strategy before you start extracting teeth yes i'm extracting this tooth with a rubber dam it makes life so much easier i got a shout out to my buddy nathan and he talks about since i showed him that video a long time ago this is all he does was extract not wisdom teeth it's hard to uh, extract the wisdom teeth put this on the coronoid process to uh, get your rubber dam isolation but extracting you know teeth that you can put a rubber dam on uh, typically a six, five, four, any of those types of teeth. Rubber dam is really helpful. My dental assistant, actually, this is the first time she did it. I've done it a number, many times. This is the first time I've done it with Christy, and she was laughing at it. But by the end of it, it was so much easier. So the strategy for t extracting endodontically treated teeth or you know heavily restored teeth, this is both. And you know what's going to happen is that you're going to place your forceps on, the cr on this crown, and it's going to fracture into a thousand pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to plan to section it right off the hop. But before we do that, we're going to we're going to induce a little bit of hemorrhage in the PDL. And we're also going to see if we have some mobility. Lots of different ways you can do this. And what we're going to do here is we're just using some peritomes. Let's speed this up. Just using some peritomes to, you know, induce some hemorrhage along the PDL, create some space. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use our 77R elevator my favorite elevator probably my favorite because that's what i was trained with okay so next up what we're going to do is we're going to sever the inner papillary papilla there we go the papilla fibers and what this does is it helps to elevate the papilla without tearing it now what i used to do is i used to either try with much great difficulty just to elevate the papilla without severing the fibers and that just with my periosteal elevator now you can see it just kind of like boop pops out, no problem. Or what I used to do even before that is I try to take my elevator and try to place it between the teeth. And what I found is that once I started elevating the papilla, I learned that like, wow, I can get my elevator actually deeper into the, you know, the area below the contact between the teeth and get and just, it was just so much easier to get more leverage because my elevator wasn't the, my uh, 77R elevator wasn't getting pushed out. So I need to tell you that in this case, we're not actually preserving the ridge. So here's, this is the 77R elevator. You can see it's serrated. This is my favorite elevator of all time. Probably pretty much the only one I was trained on. So it's the one I know, only one I know. But what we're going to do is we're going to place nice, consistent, slow forces. And we're just checking for mobility. We're going to be getting mobility. But the main strategy of what we're going to be extracting this tooth with is sectioning the crown off. We're going to get some mobility. You'll see we get nice, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again. Nice, slow, continuous forces. I'm not going to take a set of forceps on here because this is root canal treated, cracked. So it's going to fracture into a thousand pieces. And honestly, as fun as it might be to have a crown fracture into a million pieces and snap, it's not, I don't think it's really enjoyable for a patient. So what we're going to do is we've, so let me just review this. We've numbed her up. We've now... Uh, we have mobility on the tooth, so we can confirm that. And what we're going to do is, you don't even see a set of forceps. We're going to section the tooth. So what does sectioning the tooth do? Well, let's just get into this picture here. So let's go back to Deutsche Musikant. So we can see that from the 
MB from the tip of the mesial buccal cusp to the roof of the pulp chamber, we've got six millimeters from the tip of the, to the tip of the, from the cusp to the bottom of the pulp chamber, we've got eight millimeters. And then from the top of the mesial buccal cusp down to the furcation, we've got 11 millimeters. All right, so what does this mean? Well, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut the crown off and then we're gonna section the root because what happens is, is if you're trying to section the entire from the crown with the, from, you know, what you, it seems like when you come out of dental school, no one shows you this t technique. That's, so if you know this in advance, that's amazing. Because what I used to do is I'd section right all the way through this, like at 11 millimeters of tooth. And then what happens is you become fearful. You're scared. There's three things. You either miss the section, so you kind of go too far distal. You either too, uh, you either are scared and you don't cut deep enough, so you fracture half the tooth and you mess everything up and you can't, you don't have your landmarks. Uh, there's another one there and I'll just remember it. So if you cut the crown off and I know you're scared to cut the crown off because that's your, you know, your leverage point, but go with me here. If you cut the crown off, maybe your tooth has, maybe your tooth roots have shoes. You cut the crown off. You're actually only cutting through maybe three millimeters of root structure. So let's go ahead and see this, play this out. Now, the thing is, is that this burr is actually a little bit too large. I actually don't like this burr, but this is what we had. This is a 703 burr. So with the 77R, I prefer a 702 burr because a 702 is roughly like 1.6 to 1.8 millimeters uh, in diameter. So when I section the tooth, and I'll get into that in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna section the tooth. We're just gonna pop this crown off. And if you get, you know, you can section this any way you want. There's no, there's no special way because you're gonna see that I, I'm not, I'm concerned with actually the angulation because of the, actually because of the rubber dam here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fracture the crown off. Let me speed this up here. You'll see it, you'll see it play out. So we're gonna, we're essentially just gonna remove the crown in any way we can. You know, the fancy way would be just to go, you know, two thirds of the way across. What I was trained was two thirds of the way across just like I was doing there, and then the burr comes, and then the crown pops off, and off you go. But, you know, we all know that life isn't like that, and dentistry is not like that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to section that crown in little pieces. We'll get it off of there. And actually, I'm grateful that I sh <laughs> it didn't work out that way, so you can see that, like, oh, yeah, okay. There's many ways to skin a cat, and there's many ways to take a crown off. So now you can see is that once we remove that last bit of crown here, and you know, the benefit of what I'm doing here is that if you're terrified of cutting two thirds of the way in and you're like, I might cut something, you know, just do what I did. Just kind of take it off as you need. There's no race. As long as the patient's super numb, you're good. So off comes a crown, boom. So the next part of this video is not that good because of course my hand's in the way. So what I'm going to be doing so you can see it is I'm literally gonna be sinking the burr like three millimeters through the furcation and we're good. And the beauty is that with this, you can't see it here. So there we go. So now I can have an idea where I'm going straight down the middle of the tooth. I can't see the, the orifices here because there's a compo composite core there, but you have a pretty good idea. You can even elevate, if you really wanna make sure you're in the middle of the tooth, other than just looking at it, you can push the gingiva away and see where the furcation is. That's another way to see it. Uh, but like I said, my hand was in the way. I didn't know when I was recording. So I'm going to speed this up. And you're just going to section all the way through. It's pretty simple because the, the length of those, look at that. Boom, done. It's, of course, moving the microwave, uh, the microwave, <laughs> the microscope camera out of the way. And there we have our section. So, you know, we it's not angled. It's perpendicular to the furcation. We're all the way down to the osseous crest, the inner radicular bone. And then all we need to do now is just elevate. So the first line of business is what you can do. There's so many different ways. So the main part of this video was just literally sectioning. That's what it is. So we know that we had mobility and we'll just play this out. This is a couple of things I could repair in terms of, or do better next time. So I'm just literally, you can, you know, you can do this wheel and axle with your with your force up there, you can turn it, there we go. You can do this and that'll spin the roots out. And you're using all different types of forces. Now what you're gonna see is that I'm gonna run into a little bit of difficulty with this distal root. Because again, I'm just using continuous slow forces. You could argue that like, oh, well, just get in there and do it really fast. But I don't want the tooth to break because it is, 
fractured, and that's why the patient is having continual pain on uh, biting. So we're just going to play this out. Let's speed this up. So nice continuous forces. And what I'm doing is I'm playing a little more with that distal root. And the reason why is because I'm going to deliver. Sounds like I'm delivering a baby. I'm going to deliver that mesial root first because it's going to come out. And then I'll have nothing else to push against like right here. So we'll get some movement. And of course, oh, right there, a beautiful fractured piece. Just like click. There goes that. So let's deliver this mesial root. Get some forceps in there, pull it out. You know, as I was, just before I was cutting this video, I'm like, why didn't I use cow horns? Because I love using cow horns. But you know what? I just, this is so much more efficient. Once the patient's numb. So we have an option here. So remember, we're not, we're not preserving bone. But we still want to make sure we don't blow apart the ridge. What I, next time, what I, what I need to do again is to remove more of that interradicular bone and then just kind of deliver this mesially. Uh, you know, put in the comments what you would do. So what I need to, but I need a little bit of a trough. You could use your your uh, criers, you know, left and right. You call them north and south, whatever you call them. You can try those. I have varying poor luck with that. So what I'm going to do is I remove some more of that inner radicular bone. And then I'm going to place a little bit of a trough right on the distal right there. So I'm going to remove more tooth than bone. Because it's a 703 burr, so it's a little bit bigger than I want. But I'm, so what I'm doing is I'm splitting the difference. So it's more like... 60% tooth removal and 30% bone. You can see I'm troughing more of bone, uh, more tooth structure there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, what I decided to do is place a purchase point and see if I can get with my uh, my point there. So we got movement. That's not the issue. So we're just taking our time. Not so much taking our time. We're just we're not using force. And then I place a little purchase point there, see if I can get some movement there. It wasn't that helpful. Then I got the big the big guns out, the big elevator. There we go there. Boom, out it came. There, little friend. So we take a look at, took a look at the root. Yep, root tip's intact, we're good. And then we're not placing any bone. Irrigate the socket significantly. And then we're going to take our bone file. We're going to remove any sharp edges because that's really critical. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place, so we'll do this. We'll make sure that we irrigate underneath that flap. That's really critical. It's a minimal flap, but we need to make sure we irrigate all under that. And then we're going to place a little bit of gel foam in there. Let's just keep going here. All right, pack a little bit of gel foam. You can use whatever you want. Everyone's got a different technique. And we're just going to use some... Um, resorbable sutures. Put in the comments below if you want me to go over some suture, different suture materials, different types of suture tips, uh, suture needles, because, you know, sometimes you, you, you may use a box, you're like, ooh, what are these? I don't, under, you know, it's kind of like, I don't understand what these needles are. Uh, can somebody give me an idea what, what different types there are? Anyways, that is that. So we're gonna take off a rubber dam just like that, and then we'll go over some post-operative instructions, and that's it. So thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. I'm grateful. Put your comments below, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.